So, <coughs> welcome to this webinar. And uh, we're going to explain uh, MPS solution for how to design uh, high power solutions. And as an example, we're going to explain um, reference design with within with open board ACDC with four factor correction. So, back to the team that we are here. Uh, Uriol Cos it's an uh, application engineer that will uh, also helps with the demonstration, live demonstration. With us, it's also Dihan, an um, application supervisor, DCDC in USA. And also we have Prasad Yossi and Jim Blasfer, uh, field application engineers in North America and Northeast America. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, first, we are going to review high power ACDC applications in which different topologies uh, are used. Uh, then we are going to review the three kilowatt ACDC PFC solution we have done in MPS. Um, and then we will go in more detail on the specifications of the different devices we have been using. Uh, this is totem pole controller, isolated gate driver and current, isolated current sensor. And finally, we will do a live demonstration with our evaluation board. And at the end, we will be a time for QA uh, as uh, Kelly has mentioned before. So we have seen in the recent years uh, a steady increase on high power applications, especially uh, the ones who are battery based um, in, in the areas of electric mobility and not only uh, cars, but also motorbikes or a small mobility devices. Uh, we have also seen the needs of uh, new applications or for energy storage or so new architectures uh, and also in general for any charger um, that we want to, to charge uh, batteries in, in a high voltage or high power. If we look in more detail on, on this AC and DC DC um, products, right, we have seen like uh, we need different features and more efficiency uh, um, that we had before. Uh, if we look, for example, in EV chargers, uh, we are thinking, if we're thinking, Vehicle to read, for example, we have we need AC DC bidirectionals and also DC DC bidirectionals. Um, in terms of energy storage, uh, when we want to supply the grid, we also need this kind of bidirectionals. Um, and for example, with offline UPS, we will also need this kind of obligations. And especially now with the new devices in silicon carbide and GAN, um, we are getting more integration, more small size and more efficiency. Uh, for implementation of the ACDC PFC, uh, that it's our aim for this webinar, uh, we are going to use a totem pole solution. Um, we are going to compare what is calling interleaving PFC with totem pole uh, PFC. As you can see in this comparison, uh, the number of components, the cost, uh, and the efficiency, of course, it's higher when we implement this totem pole PFC. We are going to go later uh, more in detail on how to implement it and how it's the behavior of this topology. Uh, so it has inherent, inherent the behavior of having a DCAC. So without changing on the topologies, we can we can implement a bidirectional option. Uh, and of course, interleaving PFC, uh, that it's mainly too bust in interleaving um, functionality um, has lower ripple because there's two current sources in parallel, so we can get uh, with with the same capacitor we get um, less ripple. Um, so going on this, uh, this is um, our solution, our reference design, and we have uh, plenty of uh, devices or DC DC uh, of our solutions inside this application. Uh, I will go in details later, but we'll show you isolated gate drivers. We'll show you current sensor, isolated current sensors. We also have in the portfolio non-isolated power supplies. We are not going to show today, but uh, MPS has a, a broad portfolio on this kind of devices. And finally, also a digital control to the pole BFC. So what it's, it's a solution that it's able to implement all the control and protections and regulation required for implementing a totem pole PFC. So, and going in more details on the specifications of the reference design we have developed, uh, we have um, 
input range and wide input range from 85 to 265 so we can cover us and eu uh, application market let's say uh, and the output it's a single phase so it's the output it's 400 volts dc with three kilowatts total power the power factor we can get with this solution right now it's 99.5 above this 99.5 and, and an efficiency very close to 99 percent uh, at a mid low uh, mid um, power uh, the implementation this is a short bill of materials uh, for um, high speed mosfets that i will show you later uh, when we need it uh, we use a silicon uh, car silicon carbide mosfets and uh, gas codes from usci for mosfets we use infineon uh, silicon 600 volts mosfets uh, for current sensing we're using a magnetic flux gate in the input ac input and then we have the three mps solutions and the, the dual isolated driver mp 18831 uh, then controller and uh, what it's mpf uh, 32010 and the isolated current sensor that it's the MCS 1802. I will go on the specification of this later on and the main features. Uh, if we review uh, how it works, uh, ACDC to the pole uh, PFC, it has many four cycles depending on the position of the four switches. Uh, uh, the two switches, call it here SD1 and SD2 are uh, switch at the read frequency. So if we have a 15 hertz read, we will switch this, um, let's say some positive half cycle or negative half cycle. So it will be at 15 hertz uh, switching very slow. So we don't have a, we don't need a high speed switching. And then um, if you look, for example, the two uh, first pictures, uh, it's kind of a boost converter in which Q1 and Q2 are implemented this boost and then it's what the control of this will give the PFC so that the, the follow-up of the current to have in phase with the voltage input voltage okay so the behavior is very similar of um, boost converter um, but we uh, reduce the number of uh, the number of uh, components uh, if we look at like the work from you can see here a b c d a and c are the fast switching and B and D are the slow uh, switch. Uh, and you can see here how we are going to generate uh, controlling this fast switching. We can follow up the current sensor. So the current input current will follow the input voltage, getting this four factor almost of 99.5% uh, uh, that it's desired for this application. This um, uh, This is some workflows uh, we get from our evaluation board. Uh, this is the steady state. Um, as you can see here, um, the input voltage uh, at 220 volts and with the output at 3 kilowatts power, uh, the input voltage, uh, the input current, it's following uh, the shape of the, of the input voltage. So uh, achieving the uh, already mentioned uh, power factor almost one. And then we have, for example, some load transients in case we want to switch and the load and we are able to keep um, the regulation on the output we are else also we are able to outstand some voltage variation in the inputs for example a voltage uh, SAG what means that you will reduce the input voltage suddenly around 20 percent more and we keep the regulation this is kind of a test and depending on the normative you have to support and we have to during this time you will have an increase of current right and we are able to to support this um, and during five seconds uh, and then after you can see uh, a typical startup from the device first coming without the device working so you have a rectification and then you have a startup start to switch in the, the proper um, high, the high frequencies the mosfets and then finally you you connect the load okay, so all, all these startups all these parameters are able to be uh, fix it uh, and configurable with a graphical user interface we have. This is typical curves. We get it from uh, this evaluation board. 
as I said before, we can have a peak of efficiency of almost 99%, and especially as we start increasing uh, the current, we get uh, a little more uh, losses. Um, and also a power factor, especially as we increase the, the current, uh, we are almost targeting of one. Uh, so I will go through more specifications on the controller first. Uh, the controller, um, it's based in average current mode, so we sense the current um, uh, we are in the input. Uh, sorry. Uh, we are sensing the current in the input and working with average current mode. Uh, the switching frequency can reach up to 100 kilohertz. Um, and also inside the controller, we have all the protections like browning out, overload protections, over voltage protections, and over temperature protections. And the communications can be RS485 or CAN interface. And as I mentioned before, we have a graphical user interface in which you can set up all this configuration. Also, uh, any parameter in the, in the closed loop um, can be set like PI, uh, putting frequency, uh, proportional gain. So it's possible to, to adapt on your needs and on your load. Uh, and finally, finally, you have also um, UR communication in case you want to, to have inside the ship with um, another DCDC um, for conversion. For example, the 400 volts to 48 volts it will be possible to get all the information on what is happening in, your, in the load. Uh, the applications, as, as mentioned before, it can be EV chargers, UPS, or NC storage. In terms of architecture, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, have, we need to sense the input voltage, the AC input voltage, and the AC input current, and also the output voltage. So these three variables are the key for do a complete dual loop. So we have information on current, information on voltage. External to the circuit, we also need to implement external over current protection, okay, because we need a really fast comparator, uh, but that will be all the circuitry you need external to the circuit. And finally, the graphical user interface, I will show you in the demo. Uh, it's possible to configure, but it's also have other functionalities like monitoring. Um, sorry. For because this automatic change, I don't know if it's in the slides or um, uh, so we are able to monitor, but also to register any fault that happens. So we get uh, immediately uh, notifications. If there is an over voltage, over current, we are able to monitor through the GUI uh, So now uh, I'm going to explain um, the isolated gate driver. Mainly we have here the MPQ. 1880831. It's a dual isolated gate driver with two inputs that define uh, over high side and low side of a set of secondary hull bridge. Uh, it has a really strong isolation from the primary and secondary. A way to measure this isolation is what is called CMTI index. You will have, in, in, if you have chosen already some gate drivers, you will know it. Uh, this CMTI is just a uh, inverse proportional to a capacitor between primary and secondary. Uh, it is especially important because it's a way to measure a common mode voltage or noise. Okay? And it's especially important when we work in high voltage and fast function devices like kind of silicon, silicon carbide, because it's, um, it's the one who is able, in these applications will provoke a really high DVDT, and this can be if the, if the CMTI is not good enough, we'll couple some noise in the input on the primary one, and this can trigger in the secondary uh, uh, your, your device, your hard bridge. So that's a little, the sequence you will follow first, you will have in the blue run, blue, blue wave, uh, sudden change of voltage, this will provoke a noise in the primary, the primary noise will provoke in the secondary some glitch, and this can trigger Again, you have it. So, um, very important, and, and the, the solution MPS is proposing uh, has uh, a really outstanding CMT mine. So, as you can see here, it's above 100k volts per microseconds. I think we are uh, compared, we're comparable with the rest of market solutions. We also have a 5k um, kilovolts isolation from primary to the secondary. Um, also, we are able to support up to 20 volts output drive. 
and up to four amps uh, sync or source for an output uh, with a very small delay between primary and secondary of just 20 nanoseconds. Uh, and also we are able to meet some safety standards like UL 1577 or BBE for, and especially for German market. The package is a uh, uh, wide body uh, SOC, SOEC uh, 60. Uh, we also, I will explain you uh, the solutions that are coming. This one is in sampling, so if somebody uh, requires the solution, uh, we are able to provide already um, some some samples. Uh, in future, we are also working in a single channel solution and also a dual independent driver solution in which the two drivers are totally independent to convert to, to MOSFETs in the OP, two switches in the OP. Uh, and finally, I will go through the whole effect current sensor. Uh, whole effect, uh, effect current sensor are based on flow of current into the AC and generate the magnetic field that is sent by the AC and transduced to a voltage. This sensor has a lot of organic isolation, which makes it ideal for high voltage applications. It allows to sense AC or DC current and in both directions and with a very low conduction losses. Uh, so uh, with a sub micro internal IC resistance. If we compare with our existing solutions, for example, transformer, they are very good for AC current, but for example, not for DC. And the size comparing with IC is much bigger, uh, uh, but also the good part, transformer doesn't need the supply, while with a hall sensor, we need this supply to, to power the IC. Uh, comparing with other things like Shun technique, uh, especially um, when we talk about batteries, so uh, measuring measuring both the current of our batteries flowing in or flowing out. Uh, when we use a shunt, it's always um, difficult because we have uh, some losses on the shunt resistor. Uh, also, it's um, no isolation uh, usually, uh, so it also makes Comparing with the whole sensor in which we have a really small resistance, uh, the dissipation is it's very small, uh, it's very uh, fit on the applications, for example, on, on battery or BMS uh, products. So this is the specification we have. We can cover up to 15 amps range. Uh, also, we have a 5 volt solution or either 3.3 uh, single supply. Um, we also have, um, as I say, a 0.9 Billions internal conductor resistance and a bandwidth. What is especially important if we want to work for motors or other applications of 100 kilohertz. Uh, and also, we uh, we cover. We are able to uh, withstand magnetic hysteresis. Um, so because we have a differential measurement of the magnetic field. Um, and the package we are using is SOC8. So with this, we are. I'm going to give time to Riol to show the our evaluation board and our setup. Okay, so <coughs> hi. This is our MPS lab here in Barcelona, where we can help you uh, to to support uh, our products. We have the, all the, the laboratory equipment. So in this case, for this demonstration, we have uh, an electronic load of 10 kilowatts, the AC power supply, an oscilloscope, and, the, and our uh, evaluation board for the totem pole. So if we, <coughs> we make a closer look, here is the AC, our AC input with a common mode filter. So here is the the, uh, the main show with the with the <coughs> the input current uh, sensor. Here we have uh, our the, the transistors. First the the fast ones and the and second the, the slower. Finally the 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 output capacitance and here is the is our uh, control board 
Also, there is an auxiliary power supply, a high voltage bag, which uh, supplies all the auxiliary circuitry. And finally, a, a communication board. So now we will show you uh, some waveforms for the startup. The board is also. We supply the, the, the <coughs> evaluation board. In this case, in 230 uh, volts. Now the, the output is lower. Do the rectification. So if we uh, turn on the device, the voltage rides up to 400 volts. So now we can uh, start to lower the, the converter. You can see uh, how the, the input current, the clean waveform, follows the, the input, which is the yellow one, uh, perfectly shaping the sinusoidal waveform with uh, some uh, ripple, which is uh, always, uh, always present. In this case, we are, we are <clears throat> we are loading the, the board with one kilowatt, but this reference design can, can deliver up to three kilowatts power. Yes, uh, as I explained before, we have also a graphical user interface to, inter to, to monitor all the signals and, and key performance of the totem pole. Uh, here we have some general parameters. You can also have an um, one moment because it was not shown. Uh, so here is the tool we have. You have you can set up some initial parameters and also you have a short review. Uh, and then here you have the possibility to monitor uh, any of the variable like input voltage, output voltage, and current, and output current, also temperature of the board. Uh, and finally, if you want to go for, uh, you can also set up your reference voltage, your current output maximum current, uh, your protections, input for protections, output protections, current, and temperature. Also, you have some <coughs> variables for calibration and also for controller, you can set up with proportional gain you want, integrated gain, derivative gain. Uh, so everything is configurable, and we can also monitor the status of any fault. So we can react in case of any problem on the normal behavior. And with this, uh, yeah, I think we can jump over the QA. Uh, so if anybody has any question, uh, you can ask now. So once again, if you have any questions, there's the QA icon at the bottom of your Zoom webinar interface, and you can just click on that and type in any questions, and we'll make sure to, to get those answered. Uh, we'll give it a second here to see if we have any questions coming in. I would remind you that we do have um, engineers available from the main page of our virtual electronica uh, area where you can just click and chat with an engineer if you have a different topic that you wanted to try and resolve. So go check that out. It's kind of a, a cool way to interact with our engineers remotely. Uh, and then I will remind you that uh, there's sessions all week. So look for those. And all these sessions will be available on demand starting next week. OK. So far, I am. Here comes one question. Just barely made it.
Okay, so the first question is the startup current waveform. I couldn't tell if the camera refresh rate or the startup transient. I no, let me read reread that. Sorry, I couldn't tell if it was the camera refresh rate or the startup transient. Was the load stepped from zero percent to a hundred percent? Uh, we have not done the change. Uh, when we start the load, uh, when we start the converter, we start with a zero load. And then after when it, uh, we start to rise the, the lead, but we have not done a zero to 100% load step. Okay, thank you. And it looks like that answered his question successfully. Any other questions? And again, um, as you can see, we do have a, a live um, remote lab set up in Barcelona. We also have one in the US where, you know, in, in these days, it's hard to get out and visit customers. You, you could see from the multiple cameras that, um, you know, we can really help diagnose things out of our MPS Now labs. So um, there's a link to that from the main virtual electronica page, and you can go get more information on uh, how to interact with engineers there as well. Okay, I'm not seeing any further questions. So um, it looks like we are good for today. Once again, thank you for attending and we hope to see you at more of our sessions. Thank you.